Green Acres was a classic sitcom that ran from 1965 to 71. The show was a huge success thanks to its excellent writing, direction, and acting. But of course, no show is without its flaws. Facts First presents, this scene wasn't edited, look closer at the Green Acres bloopers. How'd they get that wrong? There weren't too many bloopers on Green Acres, which is surprising for a farm run by two city slickers, with the perhaps too frequent visit by one Mr. Haney, but nobody's perfect and there were some bloopers which perhaps even the show's biggest fans didn't notice. For example, in several episodes, you'll see a telephone on a telephone pole, but everyone who uses it ends up holding the phone upside down while speaking. They hold the phone upside down and are speaking into the earpiece. No wonder they were communication problems. While the show continued for six years, that didn't stop a few continuity errors from popping up. In the opening song, Oliver reaches for Lisa with his left hand as he sings, You Are My Wife. But in the next shot, he grabs her with his right hand. Many episodes show establishing shots of the farm. A lot of the times, you'll see the junk appear and reappear. Maybe they left, but always found their way back home. The tractor that Oliver uses in the show's opening credits is often different from what you see in many of the episodes, but maybe the first one was just for showing off. In one episode in the first season, it's explained that Oliver and Lisa met in Hungary during the Second World War, but in the second season, they apparently met on a cruise ship bound for Europe. One wonders if there's a hidden episode in season three that suggests they met over a cup of tea in Timbuktu. So as you can see, even great shows like Green Acres have the occasional blooper here and there. Let's find out how this show came to be. How Green Acres Came to Be Like many early television programs like Gunsmoke and The Lone Ranger, Green Acres originated from a popular radio series. It was called Granby's Green Acres and had a similar premise to the TV sitcom. Granby's Green Acres was the story of a banker who became a farmer but was more skilled in financial matters and needed to improve his agricultural skills. Although the show was only broadcast for around seven weeks in the summer of 1950, it paved the way for Jay Summers to develop and produce a TV show with a comparable theme in the mid-60s. Needless to say, the adaptation was a massive success. Was it a true story? For many Americans, the characters on Green Acres were so relatable that many began to wonder if it was a true story. The premise seemed absurd to many that a successful city slicker would want to go to the depths of rural America. But the show's creator, Jay Summers, had once stated in an interview that the show was based on a true story somewhat. His stepfather had bought a farm and young Jay had to work on the farm as a kid. He hated it and eventually became fed up with even the gardening chores at home. Yet it can't have been all bad since the memories of working on the farm helped him write Green Acres. Life imitates art and art imitates life. For our two main stars, the show inspired them to recreate their own Green Acres at home. Eddie Albert turned his front lawn into a cornfield. In his backyard, he installed a greenhouse. Ava Gabor invested in many animals as varied as dogs and cats to chickens and rabbits. Like the character she played on the show, she liked the charm of the rural lifestyle but couldn't give up the comforts of urban life. At one dinner party, she wanted to show off her rabbits, only to find out there were more rabbits than she had bought. Unbeknownst to her, rabbits bred like, well, rabbits. Stick to the script. The show had many great lines, and this is due to its excellent writing. But on Green Acres, credit can only go to the writers. For many shows, there's always a bit of improvisation. But on Green Acres, the actors always had to stick to the script and recite their lines as they were. Eddie Albert stated this was a bit challenging and unusual. Before and after Green Acres, he never appeared at any show or film where he wasn't permitted to improvise. It's rather rare, but it clearly paid off as many people are still reciting their favorite lines from the show to this day. Did Mr. Haney know Elvis? One of the most memorable characters from the show was Mr. Haney, played by the inimitable Pat Buttram. Mr. Haney was based on Colonel Tom Parker. He, of course, was the eccentric manager of one Elvis Presley. That's right, Mr. Haney was based on Elvis Presley's manager. But it wasn't Jay Summers who based Mr. Haney on Colonel Parker. Rather, it was actor Pat Buttram himself. Pat had met Colonel Parker on a film set for the movie Roustabout, which starred Elvis. He found the colonel to be quite an interesting character, and when he was eventually hired to play Mr. Haney, he based his performance on observations of the character. Where the heck is Hooterville? Often, rural parts of the U.S. have some of the most interesting names, and the setting in Green Acres is no different. 
It's never mentioned whether Hooterville is a real place or inspired by a real place. In one episode, it's hinted that it's near New York City, while in another episode, Mr. Haney, if we can trust him, states that it's at least 300 miles away from the bright lights of Chicago. The characters who are natives of Hooterville don't have a fixed accent that a linguist could point out. So we just have to assume that Hooterville is off the beaten path and we'll leave it at that. Just how crazy was Green Acres? Let's end by looking at a few more crazy trivia facts about this show called Green Acres. One was that the show had many references and jokes which you wouldn't understand unless you watched a lot of 60s and 70s sitcoms. For example, there's one joke where Lisa jokes about being similar to Zsa Zsa Gabor and that she could speak Hungarian and do impressions of the actress. Of course, the joke here is that Lisa is played by Eva Gabor, Zsa Zsa's sister. Plus, remember when we mentioned that the couple apparently met in Hungary during the Second World War? It hasn't been confirmed, but it's likely that this plotline was mentioned due to Eva Gabor's Hungarian heritage. The show also had many references to the Beverly Hillbillies, which was also produced by Paul Henning. There's even one episode where the characters put on a play of the sitcom. So one sitcom references another sitcom from the same creator. Talk about knowing how to plug your stuff. Green Acres was a successful show, but sadly, it was canceled prematurely in the 1970s. This sudden cancellation has been referred to as part of the rural purge. Apparently, CBS felt shows that took place in rural America wouldn't last, and so many similar shows were also given the axe, without the usual warning of yelling timber before the tree falls. The 70s was showing the urban way of life as ideal, and perhaps there was no longer an appeal of hitchhiking all the way to Hooterville. Nevertheless, Green Acres had a good run, and 52 years after it came to an end, it remains one of the most popular sitcoms of all time. Though the U.S. is a predominantly urbanized country today, we do see a reverse trend of many Americans returning to smaller towns. Perhaps, once again, Green Acres will resonate with a new generation as it did with earlier ones. So even if you love the city life, don't rule out going to Hooterville and saying hi to Eddie and Lisa. Just watch out for Mr. Haney. Now it's time to hear from you. Are you a fan of Green Acres? Did you know about any of these bloopers and fun facts? Let us know in the comments section below.